Jill Hopkins here, Vocalo Radio, live from Lollapalooza with Lady Pills. Hello, Lady Pills. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Now, I, I uh, am really grateful for you guys for bringing some, like, actual rock and roll to Lollapalooza and reminding me uh, of, of the roots of the festival. Uh, but I'm really also fascinated by your story and, and, and uh, how you became a band and just... The larger issue of just music education makes me really uh, happy to, to see. Can you tell me a little bit about how uh, you guys got together and uh, what made you want to start a group like this that kind of brings kind of a, I don't know, like a 90s sensibility to Lollapalooza? Sure, yeah. Um, so, Oops. ooh. <laughs> we'll do that. So Lady Pills was um, like a solo started out acoustic and then I uh, started randomly playing full band with a couple of friends and I was really fun but I definitely wanted to work with women and everything just kind of worked out that way and then I met Allison and I knew that she played the bass even though then I found out she didn't but then she did <laughs> <laughs> but then she learned and we we started writing together and creating this and um Pompey joined us actually about a month and a half ago because oh, our, wow. our original drummer has a different path yeah. and so Pompey has joined us but we got this all together for this and it's been now uh, in listening to your music I got like a real kind of Tanya Donnelly uh, belly feel to it and I really appreciate that um, tell me a little bit about who your influences might be and what I, I play in a, an all a two all-girl bands myself so I really appreciate uh, want like th that need to play music with other women yeah. can you tell me a little bit about why that's important to you um, I feel like playing music with women you you have this understanding that you're not really going into it with expectations because as women in the music industry, we're not really allowed to have expectations. Sure. And um, and also even like in the writing sense, it's really nice because like we can literally just go sit down with like nothing in our brains and just kind of like enter that void of yeah. writing and being a woman and yeah. just go for it. I feel like being in a room and writing with women is kind of more of a judgment-free zone than being in a room and writing with men, even if the, those men are like your ride or dies, like your best friends, there's still somehow yeah. that stigma there. Can you tell me about the freedom from that that, that you might feel? Uh, for me as a drummer, um, especially going to music school with a department that had just a lot of like just men in the department yeah. playing drums, it was like I always kind of felt slighted and a little shy and kind of like I wasn't worth it or wasn't valued and for me it's amazing to get to actually play with women because we're able to bond in just a different way and yeah. we're able to have a certain level of chemistry and it's like no judgment it's like you drop the beat you flipped it whatever or yeah. you did this hip thing like it's great you know it's just a we're all kind of like chemically on the same level that makes it really refreshing yeah. now uh, opening uh, the day of a festival no pressure you guys did it well <laughs> uh, but you're setting the tone for, for the whole day in a way can you can you tell me a little bit about what that experience was like on, 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 a, on the big stage first thing in the morning day three of Lollapalooza sure um, this well this was our first like major festival it's definitely the oh. biggest stage that we've played to date um, so it, it's it just felt really, really good. Like, I mean, our our biggest goal is to create a space in which people can just exp be themselves and yeah. like be their truest self, and to go out there and have all these people that we've never seen. They may not know us because they probably don't know us because we're from Boston, and and just have everyone just enter that space and like put the best that they can into it and create this really cool yeah. vibe is like the best way to start the day, and I hope that everyone can take that with them throughout their day and just feel good and this I can't believe this is your first major festival because you guys handled it like pros like this is uh, I, was, I was very impressed uh, proud of you like I was uh, your weird, <laughs> like your weird aunt might be <laughs> uh, so now that you've got a taste of the big time how are you gonna go back <laughs> well, keep go 
going back to the Berkeley practicing facilities and find a job. <laughs> You mean rock and roll's not paying the bills? <laughs> no, 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 not a, not yet. Hopefully, one hopefully one day. Yeah. Now tell me a little bit about your studies at, at Berkeley. There's, you know, it's obviously just an illustrious uh, institution, and some I think when people think of, you know, classically trained musicians, they tend to think of just very serious music. But honestly, like some of the, one of my favorite graduates of Berkeley is, is Brendan Small, who's from here in Illinois, who uh, created Metalocalypse and, and home movies and all of that stuff. How is it studying there and just being able to pull from all of these different uh, kinds of music to, to create your own sounds? Uh, I feel like we should all answer this one. Um, me, myself, I, I was violin performance major at Berkeley and I didn't start playing bass until Ella asked me to be in her band. <laughs> so, I mean, my experience there entering as a classical musician uh, was very interesting, but Berkeley, the really cool thing about Berkeley is that, like, if you take that initiative to just, like, go out there, go to, like, jams, go just, like, get out of your comfort zone, like, you can honestly play any genre you want to there. And then you kind of like can decide, well, like I like this from there and I like this from there. And like, I think that I may be good at that if I keep practicing it and you just like go with it. And mm -hmm. It's really interesting because like even just like being there, you hear so many different things and that affects your ear. Yeah. Like I feel like my ear hears so many different aspects of music than sure. it did before going there and just being surrounded by the people. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm uh, very jealous. <laughs> Anything you want to sure, say? Yeah. Um, I mean, music is already such a universal language, and then when you learn to speak the language more specifically, you have that common ground with everyone. And it can be nerdy, yeah. but it, it's also just so incredibly useful to like have that common yeah. understanding. Um, I think that's probably the most important thing from Berkeley is that universal language. Um, I think. For me, the most important takeaway from Berkeley, um, since we're a music school and we don't have sports teams, uh, we have house shows essentially. Oh, that's awesome. So it's kind <laughs> of like on the weekends, you know, we don't go to like sporting events or whatever. You go, you go, <laughs> yeah, I love football. You go to <laughs> house shows and you see, you know, your peers and a lot, honestly, of like my inspirations and musicians that I take things from are my, are my peers. You know, some of my like people that I look up to are the people around me in my network that I met because I went to this crazy place with all these crazy people doing all these like wacky things, and it, that's amazing for you know learning and growing and taking a little bit of this and a little bit of that and kind of putting it on your own melting pot, if you will. That's awesome. Are you guys sticking around for the rest of the day? Are you excited to see anybody else play today? Yeah, we're gonna try to stick around as long as we can. <laughs> <laughs> Take advantage of those pink wristbands. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> go get some free shoes. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We're trying to get the free sunglasses back. Ooh, we've got some here for you if you are so inclined. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to keep you. I know you've got a busy day ahead of you, but I do. I, I just appreciate y'all and and the music that you're making, and I just want great things for you. And thank you for stopping by. Thank you for your <laughs> Oh, anytime, anytime. I'm, I'm, I'm just glad to see young people making great rock music because I can only take so much EDM. <laughs> uh, Jill Hopkins, Vocal Radio, Lollapalooza, 91.1. See you later. Lady Pills, yay!